Hello, folks. Remember being a kid, watching all those cool spy movies? Spy Kids, Spy Kids 2, Spy Kids 3D, Game Over. Every kid wanted to be a spy kid. I mean, now I'm not so sure because 50% of them grow up to marry Megan Trainer. so. But when you were a kid, the idea of being a spy was so cool. And why was it so cool? Say it at the same time. Three, two, one. The Diplomatic gadgets. immunity. Okay. Yeah, that too, I guess. It was the gadgets, dude. Cameras as small as a dickhole. Lasers that cut through windows. Those, like, sound amplifier things that are the least subtle things ever. A pen that doubles as a gun that's as small as a dickhole. But the coolest spy gadget of all time is obviously, say at the same time, three, two, one. X Murdering somebody goggle. and getting away with it. Okay. Not even a gadget. It's x-ray goggles, obviously. Dude, seeing through walls? Get out of town. That's so cool. Are you kidding me? But what would it be like if a kid who was not of the spy variety got his hands on a pair of x-ray goggles? You know, what would that be like? Well, the movie that we're going to be talking about today set out to answer that very question. The movie is called The Kid with X-ray Eyes. It came out in the year 1999, and it stars Justin Burfield, the kid who played uh, Reese in Malcolm in the Middle. For some reason, though, in the UK, this movie movie is called The X-Ray Kid, and the front cover of the UK version features a kid who is not in the movie. Like, I don't know who that boy is. Who Who is that? Who that boy? I don't know why they had to change the title for people in the UK. Boy with X-Ray eyes, what does that mean? <coughs> oh, X-Ray Kid, that makes sense. Just a bit of banter. Before you libs fucking cancel me for that terrible British accent, I'm just joking. Okay, I know British people are just an urban legend, but this is the American cover. You got a smoking hot babe in one lens, oh, yeah. and then a smoking hot skeleton in the other lens. <laughs> now that's what I call a boner. <laughs> this movie is like really uh, bad. If I saw it when I was a, a kid, I would have loved it. I, I would have watched this movie all the time. But there are some aspects of this film that are just purely insane. So without further ado, let's watch The X-Ray Kid, or uh, The Kid with X-Ray ray eyes. The movie opens up on an epic car chase with our main character, Bobby, behind the wheel. And beside him is his sexy, sexy sidekick, sidekick who's about to kill herself. I think it's time for our secret agent. We can't let the bad guys take us alive, pills. Yeah. And then a plane swoops in and tries to blow them up, but Bobby expertly dodges all the bombs while calling this grown woman baby way too many times. Save it, baby. Better freshen up, baby. Come on, baby. So after that huge spectacle... Okay. Spectacle. Fuck is that? So after that huge spectacle of an action sequence, we find out it was only just a dream. It was a stupid dream, huh? Yeah, it turns out Bobby's just a regular old kid. He's not some super cool spy who's dating an adult woman. And then immediately after that fake car chase, we cut to another car chase, but this one's real this time. And this one's featuring the fucking king, Darren Norris. He's known for a bunch of other awesome shit. And in this movie, he plays a CIA agent uh, named Harry Stamper. Just gonna get this joke out of the way. Uh, I've got a Harry Stamper right here for you. So Agent Stamper is getting chased by these two bad guys because he's got some precious cargo in that deal or no deal briefcase in his passenger seat. And you don't need x-ray goggles to know that there's x-ray goggles in that briefcase. And I gotta say right now, spoiler alert, this movie has one of the worst cases of terrible aim from the antagonists. They cannot shoot anybody, dude. Like, they are worse than stormtroopers. Show off. <laughs> Show off. I missed him by a lot. But you only missed him by a little. I guess that's why you're the boss. So, Agent Stamper, a CIA agent, you know, agents who are supposed to be, like, adept at fucking everything. They got all their stats maxed out. He's driving away from these bad guys on a completely empty road, and then this happens... What the fuck happened? Dude, this has got to be the worst CIA agent of all time, dude. You've, <laughs> you've never taken a turn in a car before? What the fuck? Whenever there's a slight bend in the road, he's just like covering his face with his arms like... <laughs> dude, how the fuck did this guy get his driver's license? All right, you're just gonna want to take a right up here. Did you just say right? The fuck? Okay. Oh, no! Oh, no! We're gonna die! Oh, man, I don't wanna die! 
There's so much left undone. Oh man, did you just say left? Yeah, but like not the direction. Oh! <laughs> Okay, so back to the film. The bad guys look down into the water and see that the car is gone. So they assume he's dead, but they still need that mystery suitcase. So the bad guys leave for some reason and then fucking guess what? Agent Stamper survived that somehow. And he not only survived it, he fucking walked it off. He's walking like, he just walked away like fucking nothing <laughs> happened, dude. I guess you don't need to be a good driver if, if nothing can kill you, right? So now we cut back to Bobby. Uh, his parents are driving him to his uncle Chuck's house for the weekend because they're going away for their anniversary. And of course, Bobby's still going on about this spy nonsense. Robert, that spy nonsense is gonna rot your brain. He's 12, Drake. I'm sure that's not the only time that sentence has been said. What about your relationship with Drake? I love him. I met him in Australia and um, he's honestly so fantastic. And we just texted each other the other day and he was like, I miss you so much. I was like, I miss you more. He's 12, Drake. So they drop Bobby off at like the, on like the side of the street and like make him walk the rest of the way to his uncle's beach house. Chuck's house is right down there and nothing's gonna happen to him. And yo, dude, check it out. His fucking hat says SMP, bro. Minecraft. It was only just me. That's what the hat is. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we now cut back to the bad guys and they're on the phone with some uh, underwater divers. Diver, I hardly know her. These divers are very good at their job, okay? Not only do they show up in fucking minutes, but they can also talk underwater. Can't find anything but a bunch of junk down here. Meanwhile, Bobby is walking along the beach when he spots the briefcase and he immediately takes it for himself. And honestly, dude, I would have done the same. There isn't a name on it or anything. Like, why would you even try to figure out who it belongs to, right? I think it's a... I think it's a closed case. And also, nothing bad has ever been in a foreign container that washed up on a beach. So now we meet Bobby's uncle Chuck. He is played by Lizzie McGuire's dad. And he's this cool, easygoing, hippie type dude who lives on a beach. And in his spare time, he combs the beach for little knickknacks and treasures using a metal detector. That's how he makes his money, I guess. He like sells treasures that he finds on, on the beach. He's also kind of like friends slash enemies with this beach cop named Patterson. Somebody reported a car going off a cliff and in the ocean. You wouldn't know anything about it, would you? Which, number one, I didn't even know beach cops existed. Let's hope he never finds out about the Black Sea or he'll try to fucking arrest it for simply existing. Pigs live on farms, man, not the beach. What's going on? And two, if there was ever like a fictional duo to ship, <laughs> It's those two. You know, in the five years I've been working the beach patrol, I haven't seen you do one thing yet that I like. I'm finally doing something right. Just fucking kiss already. Do it, all right? Make out for me. Okay, so one thing I noticed about this movie is they must have been filming on the windiest day of all time because all the dialogue in these outdoor beach scenes, they're all dubbed over. I've been cool. Cool. Like you can see his shirt fucking moving in the wind, right? Like they're right beside an ocean. <laughs> and it must have been so shitty to be one of those actors and like you finally rapped on this fucking crazy shitty movie. And then they're like, hey, sorry, remember all the lines you said on the beach? Yeah, yeah, they're all bad. We can't fucking hear any of them. We gotta come back and do them again. Hello, it's me, editing. Pay no attention to my shirt. I noticed something in this scene that proves my point of it being dubbed over even more so. In this scene that I just played, there's a jump cut that they added in to the movie. I didn't change this. This is what it looks like. Finally doing something right. So they must have added that jump cut to make sure the new recorded lines of dialogue lined up with the old ones. And it doesn't look good. <laughs> like that's like a YouTube edit, not a movie one, you know? I'm gonna keep editing, but you'll see me again. Goodbye. I know I'm nitpicking, but you know, it just sort of takes me out of it, you know? I was totally believing this until <laughs> until now. But on the other hand, I guess it's better than the alternative. Uh, okay, so now we cut to Stamper, who has approached uh, the lifeguard to ask about his missing briefcase, which is definitely what a CIA agent would do. Hi, I just drove my car off a cliff. Have you seen my secret suitcase? Meanwhile, Bobby and Chuck open up the briefcase to discover a pair of goggles. And when Bobby puts them on, they discover what the goggles really do. Ah. How's that, little dude? Oh my god, they're scary goggles. They make everything spooky. They must be x-ray goggles or something. Oh yeah, okay. That that actually does make more sense because of the title of the, the movie. So Chuck, after realizing he has the ability to see through solid objects, his first thought is... If we adjust these knobs just right, I think what we can do is just look right into the sand. 
You know, I don't need that crap metal detector anymore. With these, I can make myself some real money. Nice. <laughs> so funny that with this incredible life-changing technology, he still doesn't want to do anything else with his life. That's like if you gave a garbage man like a huge stack of cash and he was just like, Okay, here you oh. go. Are you, uh, are, are you sure about this? I'm positive, okay? I don't need it. It's yours. Uh, okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Man, if I had that amount of money, I would never throw it out. So now Bobby and Chuck are going to get lunch. How about a burger? But Bobby brought the x-ray goggies. Let's see how he uses them. Hey, you got some spare change for a guy who's down on his luck? Maybe so. Let me see here, man. Hang on, Uncle Chuck. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Chill, Bobby. Hold on, Uncle Chuck. Let me see this guy's dick and balls first. This is a literally the Google show me this guy's balls thing from the Eric Andre show. He fucking stole that from this movie, dude. Google show me this guy's balls, please. So why do you need change anyway? You already have a couple hundred bucks on you. Okay, so he uses the goggles for good. He exposed that this man is pretending to be homeless and he's making a bunch of money. Okay, that's amazing. It looks like he's using the goggles for good. Hey. Uh, all right. Never mind. That's right, darling. Just us guys. Oh, what a cute little boy. Great. Follow me. Obviously, I don't need to explain why that's fucking crazy. But, I mean, it's a movie from 1999 about a boy finding x-ray goggles. I mean, it was literally on the cover. Not that one, mate. Who the fuck is that? I still don't know who that kid is. But maybe with my x-ray goggles, I'll be able to no! see. Okay. Yeah, that's probably a good call. Sorry, I was just... I was just doing my Drake impression. He's 12, Drake. Okay, so now we cut back to the fellas. They're walking along the beach, digging up various items, uh, watches, trophies, grenades, you know, the usual things you find at the beach. And then we get another scene, which seems a little out of place for a children's film. Hey! What's going on there, Jack? Hey, Christy. Who's this little cutie? A friend of yours? Yeah, okay. <laughs> How about we don't get a through the leg shot on a children's film? How about that? Hello, it's me editing again. Okay, so last night I was talking to my friend, Freddy Dredd. Um, I was telling him about this video that I was working on and I explained the movie to him and the actor that was in it. And he was like, that's weird because in Agent Cody Banks starring Frankie Muniz from Malcolm in the Middle, there's a scene <laughs> in Agent Cody Banks where he puts on x-ray glasses and like stares at a girl, like like looks at her naked body through her clothes. I, I'm not necessarily sure what that means. I just think it's weird that two out of the three children from Malcolm in the Middle have both had scenes where they <laughs> have x-ray goggles and are looking at, I don't know, it's weird. So do we? Do we need to say anything else? You're our last hope. You're the chosen one. <laughs> okay, yeah, I just want to add that in because I thought that was just really weird. Back to the video. At the very least, Chuck at least knows that's wrong and he takes the goggles away from Bobby. She isn't consenting to show off her naked body, right? And obviously and obviously the, the adult knows to not use the goggles. And okay, he is he is putting on he is using the goggles. Okay. Never mind. Lizzie Mc why are you doing that? So while the fellas ogle with their goggles, Agent Stamper steals a car to escape the bad guys. And I hope everybody else on the road has their seatbelts on because this guy cannot fucking drive. And now one of the bad guys show up to Chuck's house to ask about a briefcase, and she ends up seeing it on the table, so she just takes it. But then, something crazy happens. No! Blast it! Now we do it my way. He took the goggles out! Wow. I have no fucking idea how he knew some bad guys were gonna show up and just take the case from like how did he did how did he know that was gonna happen does he just put pieces of paper that say sucker like all over his house just in case oh my god man i am starving um hey where do you keep your knives knives oh um just in that drawer right behind you awesome thanks man no problem what the fuck dude why is this in here okay I figured I'd be getting a call from you sooner or later. Dude, what are you talking about? I just wanted a knife for my food. Well, I've got some bad news for you. I've got all my knives right here with me. And I'm at the airport. About to board a flight to Germany. Yeah. You're never gonna see me again. <laughs> Better luck next time. Okay, I just wanted to cut my burger in half, but now I guess I won't. Uh, have a good trip, man. Oh. <laughs> 
I, uh, I, I thought you, I thought you needed one. No, not really. Oh. All right, I guess I'll just bring this. Oh my God, he has a knife! Run! No, oh, no, it's not what it looks like. Officers, get him! That was weird. All right, burger time. Back to the movie. So now we get yet another car chase, and this one is real also. Stamper is chasing Bobby and Chuck because he somehow knows they have the goggles. And dude, when Stamper drives right by the bad guy, gun out, he does not shoot, not even once. Good job, dude. So they go to chase him in their car, but their car uh, doesn't start. Come on, you piece of junk. And honestly, I think they've got a guardian angel because sharing the road with Stamper is a fucking death sentence. <laughs> so Bobby and Chuck realize that they're getting followed and they gotta lose this guy fast. So they do this. Stop, stop, stop crashing your car, dude. Like no fucking, no fucking way, man. How on earth is this man a CIA agent? Does that stand for cars in air? <laughs> Cause that's what he fucking does every time he drives. <laughs> this guy's so fucking stupid, man. The one single car he is directly behind makes a left turn. He goes straight, looks down at his watch while he's driving and then fucking crashes through a billboard. He's a fucking idiot, but I have a theory on why he's acting like this. He had the x-ray goggles for who knows how long, right? And x-rays contain like a huge amount of radiation, correct? Yes, yes I, I am. am. And you're putting them fucking right on your head, dude? This guy must have fucking brain damage, dude. I really hope this movie doesn't end with everybody getting fucking brain cancer because brain cancer sucks, right, Jacob? Yeah. Having brain cancer sucked. Yo, Curtis, what, what do you want me to come on here and just be like, ha, uh, ow, ow, where'd it go? Yeah, good brain cancer joke. Is it even in the, the movie? The movie's about a kid with x-ray vision. There's nothing to do with brain cancer. Fuck you. Okay, so now the bad guys are rummaging through Chuck's house when Patterson walks in to confront them. Because although Patterson and Chuck have their differences, Patterson deep down really cares about Chuck and they should kiss. So they leave to meet with their boss and their boss is very upset with them for not having the x-ray goggles. Which is fair, I used to get in trouble for that pretty frequently at all my old jobs. Get out. And uh, this next part of the movie is very strange. Let's watch this quick scene. Whose house is this? Mine. You must be rich. Yeah, I wrote a surf predictor program a couple of years ago. You wrote a what? A computer program. So yeah, Chuck is like filthy fucking rich, I guess. But he just chooses to live on the beach and use his metal detector to find treasures to sell. Which is kind of fucked up. Because it's like, what, this super rich dude, he's like cosplaying as someone who needs to find treasures on the beach to stay afloat. Pun intended. He's not even like, yeah, I made a bunch of money, but I don't even care about that. I just need the beach and a metal detector. It's not like that at all. He just kept all his money still. And earlier in the movie, he says this. My dad says it takes money to survive in this world. What's important is being happy. Easy for you to say, man. And this is also when we find out that Chuck is like secretly an army veteran. No one, no one knew. Nobody knew that he spent most of his life in the army. Uh? My favorite part about this scene is they reuse the same line of dialogue pretty much right in a row. Is this you? Yeah. Are these medals yours? Yeah. What did you do? Yeah. Okay, I added in that third, yeah. But dude, it's the same fucking clip. Yeah, yeah. Which makes no sense, because you already had the actors come back to redo the dialogue from the beach. Like, did you just forget to have them say yeah a different way? Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite Usher song? Yeah. Mine too. Okay, so now Stamper somehow found Chuck's house after crashing his second car of the movie. They get in a wicked fight outside, uh, but they end up joining forces at the end. Wanna come in my house? Sure. Stamper starts talking about how the CIA needs the goggles back because if they fall into the hands of their enemies, 
terrible things could happen. Because obviously terrible things have never happened uh, due to the CIA. The prototype was stolen by a pair of thieves. A tall guy and a sinister looking redhead. I stole the goggles from them the day before yesterday, before they could be sold to a foreign power. They will kill to get them back. Hey. No, they won't. Also, another thing I want to talk about is how empty this movie feels. You never notice how, like, packed and alive movies feel when you watch one that isn't. In every scene other than the diner, no matter where they are, nobody else is there. Like, no other cars, nothing at all. It's like these are the only people that exist in this world. Or maybe Stamper fucking killed everybody else because of his reckless driving. <laughs> <laughs> But we're getting close to the end, okay? I promise. Chuck calls Patterson and asks for his help because he is going to deliver the goggles to Stamper that night. Well, I also ran into this G-man that's looking for the same package and I'm supposed to deliver it to him tonight. Which is fucking so stupid. Cause hey man, he was just at your house. You had the goggles, give it to him. This movie could have ended five minutes ago, man. But anyways, he asks Patterson for backup. You're not actually suggesting that you and I become partners, are you? And he leaves Bobby alone to go deliver the goggles but also he doesn't take the goggles with him so like where the fuck is he what's he doing i don't know this part this whole part like is still very confusing to me and i've watched this movie like three times now but obviously as soon as chuck leaves the bad guys break into the house and they end up capturing bobby and they hold him hostage until chuck brings them the goggles do what i tell you and there'll be a happy reunion you know what we want. They go back to house to get the goggles and Chuck immediately knows where Bobby hid the goggles. The entire house is like ransacked, but he somehow knows that they're they're right there. How'd you know that? You don't even have the x-ray goggles to fucking see that they're there. I feel like that... I don't know, whatever. They get the goggles and, and then they leave. Chuckle, is this you? Yeah. All right, guys, it's time for the big finale. The ultimate showdown, if you will. And Chuck did not come to play. A gun. It's not for you. It's for them. Got your attention now, don't I? <laughs> yeah, dude. Give me the kid or the goggles, get it. Okay, so there's this dumb fucking fight scene. Some stupid shit happens, like an explosion. There's a bunch of missed gunshots. And then Chuck gets crushed by some shelves. Say that 10 times fast. Chuck gets crushed by some shelves. Chuck gets crushed by Chappelle. Chuck, 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 Chuck has a crush on Dave Chappelle. And dude, this one shot is so fucking funny because they had to rest this like huge shelving unit on the actor. But you obviously can't do that because you don't want to like hurt him while you're on set, right? So I guess they just put like a fucking pillow or something in his shirt, but it literally looks like they just gave him titties for this like one <laughs> shot. <laughs> Meat sucky sucky now, mommy. You ever get fucking hit so hard in the chest you grow some fucking mommy milkers, man? I'm surprised Bobby didn't throw on my goggles to catch a glimpse. But anyways, they all end up getting captured and uh, locked up. But not before Bobby can get another look at Booby. Buyer's already there. There? We're en route, sir. Uh, and this next scene is also pretty fucking crazy. I guess the bad guys are selling the x-ray goggles to a terrorist, but their depiction of this terrorist is pretty wild. It's been so long since I've killed anybody personally. Usually I snap my fingers and it's done for me. Yeah. What the fuck? So everybody's locked in this room, but Bobby finds a way to escape through the air vents. Uh, emergency meeting. I think Bobby's the imposter. I'm really sorry about that. Bobby ends up stealing back the x-ray goggles while the scientist running a diagnostic test on them takes a break. Well, these goggles are fine. I need a break. It's a good thing everybody in this movie says exactly what they're thinking out loud. Goggles are gone. Quit. Bobby goes back to break everybody out of the room and he's using the goggles to see which room they're in. And once he finds a room that they're in, he starts using like a pocket knife to pick the lock. But if you rewatch the scene of them getting locked in this room, the guy just turns a lock to lock it. What are you doing, Bobby? Why are you picking the lock? Just fucking unlock it, man. It's just, that's all you need to do. You see how fast the fucking brain damage is kicking in from the x-ray goggles? Okay, movie's almost done, I promise. And again, I know this movie is made for kids, but like, man, it seems like they just did not have a plan. Like, they did not have an ending for this movie at all. They just like rented this random office building and they were like, yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get there. I don't know. Because <laughs> watch this scene. I'll get the kid. I've got you now, you little punk! Ah! Well, do it, I swear! Go ahead and try! Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> little kid! Ah! Okay, 
First off, I love the music playing in the background of this terrifying, like, chase scene, you know? I've got you now, you little punk! And also, dude, I didn't think I would ever say this on my channel, but like, hey, just shoot the little kid. Just shoot him. He's right in front of you, holding the goggles that you need, and you have a gun in your hand. Shoot that little person. So that's her taken care of, but we got one more bad guy that they gotta deal with. Uh, and this final fight scene comes to a head when the bad guy has Chuck and Bobby at gunpoint. If I was in their shoes, I really wouldn't be worried based on their track record, but still. All hope is lost until Bobby comes through with the fucking 10,000 IQ play. You just had time to see me whack your old Uncle Chuck here. Well, you know, that'd be a neat trick considering that your gun's jammed. Yeah, right. Yeah, I can see it. The bullets jam sideways. <laughs> you had me going, kid. Nice. Every bad guy's weakness, a pile of cardboard boxes. So finally, Stamper gets his goggles back, even though they could have done that a fucking hour ago. And the movie ends with Chuck and the lifeguard from earlier leaving to go on a date for some reason. Now, was this a bad movie? Yeah. Were all the scenes of Bobby uh, looking at women's uh, naked bodies under their clothes pretty insane? Yeah. But... Did I also have a lot of fun while I watched it? Nope. No, I did not have fun. I didn't have fun at all. But again, I'm not a kid in 1999. I was, but I'm not currently. But honestly, dude, if you had a pair of x-ray goggles and you looked at me, you would see an empty stomach. So let's talk about this week's sponsor, HelloFresh. Folks, the holidays are right around the corner and they're usually pretty hectic. And HelloFresh makes this busy time of year easier than ever with chef curated recipes and pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your door. So you can spend less time meal planning and prepping. I've been eating HelloFresh every week for like three years now. And it honestly makes my life so much easier because I never have to worry about what I'm going to make for dinner that night because I've got like a bunch of delicious seasonal meals just in my fridge ready to make seasonal meals like cowboy turkey and black bean chili mushroom ravioli with kale and walnuts or sweet corn and green pepper chowder and the list goes on hellofresh is also cheaper than grocery shopping especially these days and they're also less expensive than takeout especially these days and the thing i love most about hellofresh is their flexibility you can easily customize your recipes by swapping proteins or sides upgrading to choice proteins or even adding protein to a veggie meal and if you need to change anything at all, like your delivery day, your address, or even skip a week entirely, everything can be done quickly and easily right on the HelloFresh app. I was gone for like literally months at a time on tour, and even then I could just skip whenever, whatever week I was gone. So it was, it was super simple. And also, guess what? The generous folks over at HelloFresh are hooking up the citizens of Curtistown with an amazing deal. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use code 70 Town for 70% off plus free shipping. Yeah, you heard me. 70% off plus free shipping. What are you waiting for? Links in the description, dude. 70 Curtis Town. All right, thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video and so many others in the past. Like I said, I've been eating HelloFresh literally every week for like more than three years now. Uh, I cannot stress enough like how great it is and how much Jenna and I like swear by it. It's like, it's truly a lifesaver. So yeah, I hope you guys check them out. I know you'll like them. Also helps me out when you check out the sponsor. So everybody wins here, dude. All right, thank you so much to HelloFresh back to me. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please press a like button because believe it or not, one like equals one driving lesson that Stamper will take. Trust me, you want him to do that. Uh, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you've ever seen this movie and let me know some other movies I should watch, man. You know, I found this movie from one of your guys' suggestions. So uh, yeah, leave a comment. Uh, you can press the subscribe button because I make a video all the time. And as soon as you press the subscribe button, you become a valued citizen of Curtistown. If you didn't know, Curtistown is the best place to live in the world. And I'm the mayor, so you have to be nice to me. It's the law. And you can check the description for all the other shit I do, my Instagram, Twitter, my weekly podcast called Very Really Good. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I would stick around, but I have to go, unfortunately. I have to go check under every homeless guy's hat to see if they're lying. See ya. Kiwi, can you move? No? Okay. <laughs>